morning, ladies and gents. Let me fix my thing. It was a little bit too um, high or low or whatever. I got to show y'all a couple of things this morning. Um, let me move this thing. I'm sorry. I thought I had it right, and then I came in here, and it's not right. So, hey, Betty. Good morning. Um, I'll show y'all something, but I'm going to wait till everybody gets on. Y'all see me all playing this morning. Um, I only put on makeup when I'm not ever, to, every time I go somewhere do I put on makeup because it's a pain in the tail, ain't it? Actually, I can have my makeup on in five minutes if I would just take the time to do it. Y'all, when my mama put on makeup, it took her forever, but she was beautiful when she got done. Um, y'all seen my mama and her pretty picture. That is the prettiest picture I believe I've ever seen of my mama. Um, and the guy where we had her uh, funeral, um, it's Smith and Miller in Cedartown. They made that photo for us and put it next to her um, during her viewing and the funeral. And they gave us that as a gift and it is so pretty. So if you're local to Polk County, um, let me just say that we were so very, very happy with them. They were amazing. Um, I'm so glad y'all are on here. I got nine now. I'm going to show y'all the picture of my mama that I'm talking about. Then I'm going to show you what I'm eating for breakfast. I'm going to eat my breakfast real quick. And then we're going to start a study. So um, if you got any questions, you can go ahead and ask me. I hope y'all have read Genesis 1 through 4. You've probably read it a million times. But they made me this. Well, not just me, but me and my family this. Is that not beautiful? And it's a big photo. It's a 11 by 14. Is it 11 by 14, I believe, I guess? And um, But you see how Mama's, uh, how she did her makeup? She always looks so pretty. And she took her time and did a good job. Um, I was looking at those earrings. I don't think I have those earrings. So she was so bad to lose stuff, y'all. My Mama would lose stuff. She would take off her earrings anywhere and she'd lay them anywhere. Mama was like the most disorganized, for real, person on the planet. So when I was a little girl, I would organize everything for her because I'm an organization crazy, which most people wouldn't believe when they watch my cooking show because I'm not organized. But there's lots of things in my kitchen that is organized. My kids tell me all the time when they go to people's houses that my kitchen is the cleanest and most organized kitchen that they've seen. So that makes me feel good. Um, Y'all, Mary Mitchell, if you come on today and watch this, let me just say I adore you and thank you so much for my microplaner. I never had one of these until she sent me one. And we used them on the Family Food Fight show to grate nutmeg. Well, let me say this. This morning, I made my coffee. I'm going to show it to y'all. I put some Cool Whip on the top. Look at that. And, well, first, I made the coffee. I grated a little bit of fresh nutmeg and cinnamon stick in the coffee. Mix it up really good. Put the whipping cream on the top. See? And then I did it again. Yummy. I told Chris, he just woke up. I said, Chris, look at my delicious latte. My fall latte. Um, I think today, I'm just so happy. Maybe I should come on more in the mornings when I'm not so tired. More, I'm a morning person, majorly. But um, today, I think I'm going to work on my website and make it fall colors. It might take me a few minutes to do it, but I'm excited about us going into the fall of the year, aren't you? You know what? When I was young... Oh, and look what I got to eat for breakfast. This is the last one, my banana muffins I made. I gave two away at church Wednesday night. Actually, I gave four away at church Wednesday night. I gave one to the uh, care pastor and his wife. And then I gave um, one to Kim. Uh, I don't know if I'm saying your name right. Garen. 
and her husband Tommy Kim watches the show all the time and y'all probably see her comment and so I sent her a muffin I've never got to meet her uh, but her husband comes to our church so that's cool ain't it but anyway air fryer I sliced this thing in half put it in the air fryer and it's crunchy on the outside this is so good so this is my breakfast okay does anybody want to say anything about Genesis 1 through 4 before I get started while I'm eating you can and y'all go make you um, if you don't have you a latte made maybe you should make one after the show for those of y'all who are watching yes I'm gonna talk with my mouth full because they all are like family for those of y'all who are watching and didn't see my last video um we're starting our Bible study in Genesis and we're gonna go through the Bible as long as it takes me I think it'll be nice and fun and we can follow you know along uh, with each other um I do okay I quit eating I'm gonna show y'all these um nutmegs that I got because I usually buy those cheap ones in the store those bodegas but I went on to Amazon and I bought this it's backwards y'all but it's organic whole nutmeg and it's so delicious so you just use your hydroplaner and grate it so um that's what I'm using today in my coffee. Look, my my whipped cream is gone, but it's all down in there. Just delicious. Well, I guess I don't have anything to say. I hope you're having a good morning. I thank you for being here. And um, we'll start our study. Yummy. Yummy. What a good breakfast. Um, Genesis 1 through 4. Pretty simple dimple. It's only the creation of the world, right? Only. Um, so, in Genesis 1, of course, in the beginning was God. I'll, I'll quote from John 1.1 1, because 1, that's my, one of my favorite verses. In the beginning was God. And the word, let's see. Wait a minute. I can't even think this morning. Well, I say I'm going to quote it, and I can't even think. It's too early. Let me hop over here and read it to you. I think it said the Word was God, and the Word was with God. Let's see what it says. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. And in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Now, I had a lady say, this is the first John, and she said um, that if she, if somebody's going to read the Bible and they've never read the Bible through, she likes for them to start in John. I, I do like to tell people to read John to see if they feel like they're saved to make sure that their spirit is um in sync with the holy spirit that's when i tell people to read john so if you're not saved or you're unsure about how to be saved or anything like that um then you start in the you don't start reading in the book but you read the book of john okay uh, because it will help you figure out uh, how your spirit's resonating, okay? But when I read the Bible, I start in Genesis because I like to start in Genesis. And i tell you why. Because if you start in John, if you start in the New Testament, then it's the age of grace that we're in now. And it's completely different than the Old Testament. And the Old Testament shows how God used to speak to his people. And it shows the blessings and the things <clears throat> that he put his chosen people through and you can just see all the things that uh, give you more faith 
and trust because you can see how God works, okay? Um, so anyway, in the first chapter of Genesis, of course, we start with the creation. And, you know, there's speculation on how many days was it really? And was it an age of time when he talks about a day? To me, all that's oblivious and it doesn't make any difference because if it did, he would have told us. So don't get all sidetracked on rabbits. Okay, don't go chasing rabbits. Just read it and believe it. Okay, and have faith in it. That's all you got to do. So, um, so in Genesis, it talks about the creation of the world. And the best part about it, of course, to me, is when he creates man in his own image. And he creates woman from the man. To me, that's the fun part to read. I mean, not that I, none of it's fun, but I just like that part. Okay? Then he gave everything to us, or the man and the woman, to eat. And, um, of course, he rested on the seventh day. I like it when it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. What I like about that is it talks about the breath of life. And at that point, there, were no, there was no sin. Um, he, he and Eve had not fallen into sin. And so that breath of life that he gave Adam must have been the most beautiful thing in the world. And Adam was probably really, really intelligent because they lived a lot longer then. Um, he named all the, the animals and all the plants. And I think Adam was a very extremely intelligent man, okay? Um, but then they, they didn't listen to God. And they ate of the tree of um, good and e evil. And so then they learned about sin. Now, God kicks them out of the garden. And the garden was gorgeous. I can't imagine. I was laying there and I was listening to it last night before I fell asleep. About how beautiful that garden must have been. And how it had the river running through it. And the four rivers that branched off of it. And the different areas. And between two of the rivers, it said, was all the gold. I mean, it just talks about um, how beautiful the area was, okay? But then they sin and they get kicked out of the garden because God didn't want them to eat of the tree of life. And I guess he knew since they'd fallen into sin and they ate of the tree of good, good and evil, they would eventually eat of the tree of life, which they were not supposed to touch as well. So, um, and he guards that garden with cherubims, which are angels. Now, one funny story about that is when my little girl was in, and uh, my little May was just the little brainiac, okay? And when she was very serious, and she's always been serious, no kidding, since she was a toddler. She's not the kind of kid that would laugh and cut up and have a, she would imagine and have fun, but she just, she was just like a little person when she was tiny. But I remember when she was in Awana, the teachers just couldn't believe the information she kept in her head, you know. And I remember going to get her one night, and they just carried on about how she told them all about the creation and about the angels that stood at the uh, garden and guarded the, um, the tree of life and all that. And they just couldn't believe because most kids are just, they just get the Adam and Eve and the serpent, you know. But anyway, it reminds me of that. Every time I read it, I think of her because she she even told me yesterday she's at um, Mercer and one of her classes is Old Testament. And she said, Mama, I'm doing really good with Old Testament. I said, yeah, you probably know it pretty well, don't you? She said, well, yeah, and we're not even through the creation yet. But she was telling me back about how people used to believe that there was water and then there was the heaven, and then there was water above it. And and when I was listening to the Old Testament last night, it does say, let me read it. Okay, it says, Thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament between the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. 
So that's why they believe that way, because it says that he divided the waters and created created something in between them. But she was very um, interested in that part when I talked to her yesterday. She's having a good time. But I will say, and I know this is Bible study and I'm interrupting, but I will say that um, I set her up there with her old computer, which is a 17-inch heavy computer. And I told her, I said, May, you're not going to be able to use this computer in class. And she said, oh, Mama, I can carry it around. Well, she's figuring out how much she has to walk and how heavy that thing is. So yesterday I ordered her a smaller computer, you know, I got her a Chrome kind of like a Chromebook, so that it's not... So anyway, she I just placed the order and she went to pick it up. Um, but with that said, let's talk about chapter two. And chapter two was Life in God's Garden, which is kind of what I've already talked about. And cha chapter three, of course, is the temptation of man. And we failed. You know, the serpent... Um, tricked Eve and she listened to him and she did what was pleasing to her eyes and ears instead of using her head and obeying God, okay? And so Adam did the same thing. He listened to his wife instead of listening to God. So then both of them were guilty and both of them were penalized and that's when God kicked them out of the garden and sin entered into the world, okay? So now, um, you know, it says, because you've done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. Oh, no, this is the serpent one. It says, on your belly you shall go and you shall eat the dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. And, of course, that's also a parallel to the devil, okay, the serpent. So, um, and then to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. And in pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. And then to Adam, he said, Cursed is the ground for your sake, and toil you shall eat of it. All the days of your life, both thorns and thistles it shall bring forward for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and dust you shall return. So um, he cursed the snake, which is, he cursed Adam, and he cursed Eve. So God took care of the problems, okay, in his way. And then Cain, they have two children in chapter 4. They have children that are Cain and Abel. And Abel gives a sacrifice that was pleasing to the Lord, but Cain does not. And the Lord favored Abel, and Cain got jealous and killed his own brother which is just horrifying to me. Who in the world would kill their own brother? So there is the sin that's showing up in them. And so Cain kills Abel. And then it talks about the family of Cain. And then Adam and Eve, Adam, uh, and Eve had a new son called Seth. Okay? And it says for Seth... Um, Men began to call, when they had Seth, and uh, men began to call on the name of the Lord. So Seth uh, was a follower of the Lord, okay? Cain, of course, was not. And uh, so we're going to start back up tomorrow. Tomorrow is Saturday. I can't start, I might can do tomorrow night. But Saturday morning, we are going over to my friend's Ellen's and putting her canopy on uh, her back deck. Me and Chris are, so we got to get up early because of the heat. But anyway, so I'll probably talk to y'all on Saturday evening. But it's, uh, let's read chapters 5 and 6. Let's see, 5, let me see how long they are. 5, 6. Mm-mm. 
Okay, let's read five, six, and seven, um, and we'll review it tomorrow. And then we'll start back up with, uh, we're going to be, we're, five, six, and seven is the family of Adam, the wickedness and judgment of man, um, Noah pleases God, the ark is prepared, the great flood, and that's it, okay? So we'll talk about those things tomorrow night, okay? And um, I hope you've enjoyed the review. And I hope that you got a chance to listen to it. If you did it, then listen to it again over and over. You always figure out something new when you listen over and over. And um, y'all get ready for the next lesson. Uh, thanks for tuning in this morning. And thanks for um, wanting to learn more about uh, God and our the Holy Spirit and Jesus. I will say that in the Amplified Version, it actually looks up the meanings of words in the other languages, and it places them in parentheses. And when you read the Amplified Version, which is my favorite version, um, because it's like studying the Bible already, and um, it said the Holy S God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit created the world. So they go ahead and look up everything and put it into place. And that's huge, y'all, because in the beginning was, Jesus Christ was in the beginning. And he did have a part in creating the world as well as God. And it tells you that in John chapter 1, and it also tells you that in Genesis if you study uh, the meaning of the word. So uh, keep that in mind as well. Let's say our prayers and we will talk tomorrow, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for the beautiful sunshine that we're having this morning. We pray for all of those who have been in the path of the hurricane that um, you will be with them and help them rebuild and help give them encouragement and peace in their heart. And um, we thank you for the life that you've given us through your Son, Jesus Christ. And we thank you. Praise the Lord that there is a New Testament, Lord. Even if we're studying your Old Testament, we um, do hold dear, of course, the New Testament as well. And um, just be with us and help us learn and help us have faith and help us grow in your word. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a good day. I'm going to go make my sight into um, fall. And I may do Halloween on the cake lesson site. And we may just start a Halloween cake soon, okay? Because um, that'll be fun. And I know everybody don't like Halloween and you know, but Halloween, um, to us, we never let our kids, you know, dress up like a demon or nothing, but we still had fun. Um, the good thing is that we don't teach them that, uh, something is fake like Santa Claus, you know. Uh, Chris never would teach our kids about the fake Santa Claus. He said, I'm not going to lie to my kids, and y'all probably think we're prudes, but my brother, and my brother sure did. He said we took all the fun out, out of it. And I was like, look, they love Dora the Explorer and they love um, Aladdin and all the different things. And they love them so much and get so excited. They can get excited about Santa Claus and not know and know that he's not real. The only real person on this earth that has that kind of power is our God. And um, so that's what we teach them. Okay, so y'all have a wonderful day and um, we'll see you tomorrow.